stuff. And I heard you guys have improved your, your packaging. So what's the deal, Levi? Yeah, each time we ship a bike, we want to get better. So we've just added tons and tons of packaging on the inside since our conception. But, you know, you can only get so far. So now we've added, you know, kind of a television looking exterior to reduce shipping damage. Oh, um, smart. So, you know, the shipping carriers take better care of the bike. Um, but then, you know, on the inside here, you know, we, we want you to have the easiest transition to get you riding and the bike comes fully assembled. It's padded up, protected, you know, like crazy. And you just can open it up Perfect. and start riding. You don't need a bike stand. You don't need extra grease or anything. It's basically ready to ride. Yes, you sir. just unfold it and yeah, you do have some good packaging. This is similar, you know, I've bought a lot of electric mm -hmm. bikes over the years and stuff and it's nice to be able to just lift it out. But be careful because I think these these are a little bit heavier, like 59 pounds or yeah, something. Yeah, just, just over 60 pounds. And yeah, you're going to want to open it up and just be able to pull the bike out and start riding. Okay, I think I was watching the video with Kev Central. He's one of the first guys to yeah. review your bike. He did a great job. And yeah. I think he cut like the front of his box and like folded yeah. it down yeah. like yeah. a garage door or something. Exactly. Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Do people need to hold on to the box if just as a backup if they needed to ship it back or you, it, know, you it's send them parts? It's always a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but you know, at the same time, we have lots of boxes. So okay. need be, we can ship ship a box. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rock on. Thanks. Just wanted to show you guys the battery all on its own. 6.6 .6 pounds, it's pretty nice. It's got like a little flip up handle on top so you can lift it a little bit more easily and transport it. And then we just stuck the keys in there so we won't lose them. This is the charger, standard two amps, you know, gets the job done. It might take up to six hours if the battery is completely empty. Sometimes you can charge it more than halfway in just like a couple hours because the first half is uh, it's just faster. The cells don't have to be balanced. This battery pack, 48 volts, 10.4 amp hours, uses LG cells, which is a little bit higher quality, 2600 milliamp on those cells in there. So roughly 500 watt hours on that. This is the whole thing. I, I like that the charger, it's like 1.4 pounds and you can unplug the wall side, make it a little bit more compact. You can charge this battery on or off the bike and you can see that little charging port right here on the left side of the bike too. So it's fairly well protected. It's a bit higher, so you're not gonna uh, kind of collide with that left crank arm if you're accidentally bumping these while you're folding the bike or something like that. You definitely wanna unplug the bike before you, you fold it. A lot of people, it seems like they don't take the battery out. You just, you know, the bike itself can become so compact that you right. just charge it right on there. Mm -hmm. So why don't we do that? This is Robbie, you're like one of the founding partners here, right? And right. It's fun to get this get this done. Like yeah. so go for it. All right. He's folding these pedals. Love those Wogo pedals. They're the sturdier ones, aluminum alloy. We've got this Neko kind of a folding stem, telescoping again. Nice that you can fit that. There's a little latch on the other side of this main joint. He's undone that, folding it. And notice the pedal position here is, is really good. It's not colliding with that steel fender. We've got that support arm right there, so you're not gonna bump that 52 tooth chain ring. You're not gonna crack that plastic. That chain's not gonna fall off as easily either because of that guide. Really appreciate that. It becomes fairly compact. Now you'll notice back here, it, it, they aren't touching or anything, but if you laid this on its side in the back of an RV or like one of those undercarriage type of situations, you know, steel rack, steel fork, steel fenders, tend to be sturdy and a little bit quieter than aluminum in the case of those fenders. But if they get scratched up, they can rust. Um, there have been some situations where people got a little scratch or something, talk to these guys, and they do have some touch up paint that they can send out. You can always use, use your own spray paint or even some fingernail polish or something. Not the end of the world, but just keep that in mind. There's, there's no like a latch here. You can buy a bungee cord from like Walmart or whatever, use that on your own. And a lot of times I'll just throw a towel between the, the two portions of the bike because it is 62 pounds with the battery in. You know, it's a little bit of weight and it's sort of, probably most of it is in the rear end of the bike with the, the rack and, and the heavier motor. I think it's like eight and a half pounds back there. But when you get the bike, there's this nice piece of foam right here that comes with it. And you can just, that's what they use it for. When they ship it, they put it right in between the folded portion of the bike. So that's my little like, Pro tip, be careful with the, the headlight and everything like that. They're fairly well protected. The display is down here out of the way. Are you able to tip this up and kind of walk with it, Robbie? Is that one of the, there we go, yeah. We shoved two of them into the back of this awesome like Jeep. This is your Jeep car. Re Jeep Renegade, you Woo! bet, yeah. <laughs> and look at they got the foam. I'm just gonna that shove it? that in there so yeah. it doesn't scratch up the car. This, this is pretty impressive. I haven't actually seen it. There's almost enough room. You can do three in this. 
Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Dang. So uh, we're only gonna need to take like 700 trips to get yeah, all these bikes. That's right, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Arizona in the winter time, and on the way over here, we saw all these people having fun, riding bikes, We've got the mountains. The, I mean, look at this, this is just so much fun. We're on a spillway here. This is the electric XP. And apparently the XP, uh, you know, it says experience right here, but I was just talking to Ravi over there and he was like, yeah, you know, that's kind of like a video game, like XP experience points, or, you know, kind of gives you that sense of fun and adventure. I'm loving the price. Again, it's $9.99 MSRP. There have been some little sales and things here, but that's, that's their default price point. And what I love about the bike is that it comes with these steel paint match fenders. Check that out. I'm on the white one today because I like having sort of a, a more visibility when I'm riding, especially at night. I mean, I love that it comes with these integrated lights, blaze light, got a single LED in the back, pretty big reflective surface, and it's built in on that steel rack. Got that clamp here, 55 pound, 25 kilogram max weight on that. And then up front, 30 lumens, another blaze light, and it's mounted to the fork. So as you steer, it points wherever you're you're steering the bike and it does have a little bit of a the lens protrudes a bit so you can see it from the side it's pretty bright right now middle of the day uh, but back at the shop even with a little bit of shade it's really noticeable so you combine that with white paint and you're going to be seen which i really appreciate again these bikes are slightly lower that makes them more approachable more compact when you fold them having smaller wheels like this this is a cst bft which stands for big fat tire 20 by four inches, so four inches fairly wide gives you that nice, stable, kind of a comfortable feel. There's a little bit more air volume here than a traditional folding bike with 20 inch diameter wheels, but maybe 2.25 instead of four. So you see what I'm saying? There's like, there's more volume, got a bigger contact patch, more grip. You can actually lower the pressure on these. You can go from like five to 30 PSI. We're riding at 20 right now, so it's sort of a mix of comfort and efficiency since we're mostly on you know, concrete. I have done some off-road riding there in the grass earlier, a lot of fun, but I've ridden bikes like this in Baja, Mexico, awesome. and we took the tires all the way down to five PSI, and then they really spread out, and they, and they didn't sink in the sand, dry sand. So if you're in kind of a packed snow environment or sandy or softer, maybe loamy environment, these tires can actually do a good job. Uh, it, but again, the tire pressure is a big deal. And for me, looking at this, you know, you want compact, approachable, but you want comfort too. It does not have a suspension fork. That's something that people call out all the time. They're like, well, you know, yeah, that's great, but what about a suspension fork? A suspension fork's gonna add weight. It's definitely gonna add some cost. It even changes the steering a little bit because you're kind of maybe bobbing. And if it's not a suspension fork with lockout or preload adjust, then you just got this kind of bouncy feel. So coming back to those tires, that's a really good option. This is a steel fork very sturdy and it does have a little bit of vibration dampening qualities built in as well so again steel steel on the fenders steel on the rack sturdy but what that means is if if they get scratched you want to touch them up maybe like some glossy paint maybe some fingernail polish people have called out before they actually have touch up paint at electric e-bikes so i think they've they've sent that to people in cases where the bike arrived scratched or something like that. But to me, this is part of what makes this bike possible. It's still 62 and a half pounds. Um, it's not like a super lightweight bike, but part of that is because it has that internal battery and the big joint for strength, 330 pound max weight on this, including the 55 pound max cargo here. So if you have a heavy load, don't want to be like a 330 pound person. It's more like 270, 275, something like that. So kind of mix and match and get that right. I think this was a decent decision to keep it under a thousand dollars USD. Uh, and then I want to come back to that comfort thing because yeah, you don't have a suspension fork, but you do have these nice ergonomic grips. They're not locking, but they're pretty comfortable and not locking means if you really grab them and you twist hard, you can kind of spin them out of place. Uh, you know, grip upgrades are very affordable to do. So that, that is good, it's good enough. We've got a low rise handlebar. You could replace this with something longer. I've read people saying, I wish it was a little bit longer, but then it comes back to the size of the bike when it's folded and whether it's gonna fit below your RV or in your closet. They do have that adjustable stem height, which is really nice. You get like 120 millimeters um, of, of height adjustment on that and 500 millimeters on this seat post. This is 31.8 millimeter 
uh, seat post diameter. So it's actually pretty, pretty wide and they do have an optional suspension seat post. So that's the comfort thing. And this saddle, it's generic. I looked all over it for like a branding, but it actually works pretty good. And look at how thick that is. It's got the rubber bumpers. The interface here is kind of like more basic. See, they've got a bolt that goes through and then these two things, they're kind of hard to line up. Most people aren't going to be adjusting that too much, but it's not like a single uh, bolt interface. And then you see how the seat post is tapered right here. This is, a, this is a little more cheap. That's part of where they're saving some money. Same thing back here. We've got a Shimano tourney derailleur. That's like entry level component right there. And we've only got seven gears, which maybe that's not too bad but it's a free wheel versus like a free hub and a cassette. And what that means is that your smallest gear right there is 14 instead of like 11. So a little bit of limited gearing range on this and it goes up to 28 compared to like 11 to 32 or something like that. So this is definitely more affordability back here, but look, they didn't leave you hanging in terms of like durability. They've got this nice steel derailleur guard and that's important for when you're stowing the bike, you're folding it up, or even when they're shipping it to you, you don't want to get this derailleur banged out of position. Notice that there is a little finger adjuster, a bar barrel adjuster. So over time, as you're riding it, and maybe the shifting isn't going quite right, and maybe you don't want to take it to a shop, you can actually just start to unscrew this, go to the left, and that creates a little bit more distance in this housing, which compensates for the cable stretch. So that's something worth noting. There's another barrel adjuster up there with both of the brake levers and the shifter. The 52 tooth steel chain ring, nice branded pro wheel, 170 millimeter cranks. That's the standard length. So it's not like you're on this little kind of a clown bike where you're, you know, zipping along like this. You're gonna get nice natural pedal strokes. And I appreciate that. Same thing with these aluminum alloy Welgo pedals. For a folding pedal, this is fairly wide, comfortable. It's not gonna flex under your foot if you're a heavier rider or you're standing up. So I really like this. And the 52 tooth chain ring seats really, it's really large to sort of offset the smaller wheel diameter. One of the benefits of a small wheel is that it gives a hub motor a mechanical advantage. So this is a 500 watt planetary geared electric e-bikes branded hub motor. I asked them about the branding of the actual manufacturer and they said, you know, we've worked with uh, a manufacturer directly to tune this up and to get something that's really reliable, but also affordable for us. So they are trying to hit that price point and you, you know, it feels like they've done, they've, they've got something that's doing a pretty good job. That's what I hear from people who have bought the bike, leaving comments in the forums at Electric Bike Review. They're like, you know, my bike's doing great. And the company offers a year long comprehensive warranty as well. So, you know, you come back to any electric bike in this price range, anything, especially if it's even lower and you buy something on eBay or, kind of a you know fly by night kind of a thing online where you don't get the seven days a week customer support people haven't actually bought it or you're getting it directly from china or something like that y you might not be getting like the customized uh tested some warranty supported motor so for me that's that's great and it is a fat bike specific motor so we talked about the mechanical advantage the gearing is set up for the smaller wheels the fact that this thing ships with 20 mile per hour top speed but can be raised up to 28 miles per hour 45 kilometers per hour you can do that in the display i'm going to show you how to do that later but what that means is it is nice to have seven speeds and you know even with that smaller you know 14 tooth versus 11 with this chain ring balance you you can you can do it you are starting to spin a little faster at those speeds but it's possible very few folding fat tire electric bikes give you any of these different higher speed options so it's nice to have gets the job done uh i just want to call that out when you do start going faster though comfort becomes an issue again and you've heard me talk about like they've done a few little things you got the suspension seat post upgrade option but i love that they've got the fat tires because that gives you a little bit wider diameter and it kind of lowers the attack angle a little bit because the smaller 20 inch wheels see that it's like a steeper thing and so it rams into bumps and rocks and stuff instead of smoothing over them with a larger wheel size so this is back to the trade-offs i'm not sure i would want to go much faster than 20 on this uh just because of like you're gonna start to feel it more and someone in the forums was like yeah you know uh, if i ride for a long ways at high speed i i do start to feel it in my wrists so go easy on yourself and remember to lower the tire pressure uh, if need be um i i feel like all the buckles and stuff here are pretty standard and they've got the little release buttons and stuff so this isn't going to come unfolded as you're riding you can even see how the battery's sort of locked in there see that little rod protruding right there that's the battery like staying in place 
and you do need to insert and twist the key to arm the bike, to, to actually ride it. And to me, that's sort of a mixed blessing because it means no one can tamper with the bike. When, you're, when you leave it, you just pull the key out. No one can really even turn it on or do anything. But when you're riding, especially if you have a keychain connected, it could be dangling around, maybe bumping your shoe or getting snagged. And if you don't have your key on a keychain, well, the key can get lost. It's not part of like your group of keys. So that's a bit of a trade-off to me. Thankfully, they used a key with a big enough opening that you can like put it on a carabiner or something like that. Not the end of the world. The position, you know, I had to kind of get down on my knees and then like insert upwards. For someone who's maybe a little bit older and doesn't have flexibility, it'd be much nicer if the ignition was like up here. But that's just not realistic. This is an electronic switch as well as a physical, you know, kind of a, a locking pin activation. So I want to call that out. For me, that's one of the trade-offs. Uh, you know, I talked about the, the seat interface. Some of the stuff isn't as name brand. I love that you get the fenders and the rack with this, but y you know, there is a little bit of extra weight because they're steel. It's not a plastic thing. You get the length, which coming back to the, the key and everything right here, see that's gonna protect most of the water from getting up here and it's gonna drain down. And I haven't heard them talk about, you know, issues with water and stuff. A lot of these e-bikes are now pretty highly water resistant. Even the, the plug port for the batteries, it's relatively high. It's out of the way of this crank arm enough so it's not gonna get snagged. It's, they're doing a pretty good job. And one of the areas that I really like is that they went with this sealed 12 magnet cadence sensor right here. A lot of the cheaper bikes, they have like the big disc with the magnets you can physically see and then there's a sensor built onto the frame and that it can kind of wobble over time and get bumped out of place. It's just a bummer. So love that they went with a sealed 12 magnet sensor. There's a bit of a delay starting and stopping on this bike and I think that's just the way the controller's set up, something they might be tuning up over time. Their controller is a square wave, um, 18 amp, so it's pretty zippy, definitely giving you a lot of power. That 500 watt nominal, I think it peaks over 900 watts, 60 newton meters of torque. So this is a pretty zippy bike, all things considered. 48 volt battery, 10.4 amp hours, roughly 500 watt hours. So it's a very capable system. It's been climbing with me, no problem. Um, but again, the square wave controller, it's, it's maybe, it, it kind of comes on a little bit harder um, at the lower levels of assist, it feels pretty zippy. And so for, for that, I find myself kind of using the throttle a little bit more because it's much more responsive. Like when I want to go, I can just ease into it and it right away it responds. If I'm using pedal assist, it seems like it takes a second for it to like activate and then it delays a little bit before it cuts off. The good thing is you have motor inhibitors on both brake levers that override the motor at any time. So anytime you're like a little nervous, going too fast or it's unexpected, just ease off on these and it's gonna kill power to the motor. And then you need power, you don't have to wait, you just use the twist throttle right here. So it's a it's a very good setup. And I, I mean, it's better than average, especially in this price range. And they've done, th they've done stuff like this, you know, 6061 aluminum alloy frame. And then they've got this little tab here for a kickstand. And the kickstand is kind of eh. It's not adjustable length, but it certainly holds the bike well and it stays out of the way of that left crank arm. And so you can actually spin backwards like this and cycle the chain, which is great for doing drivetrain maintenance, lubing the chain, stuff like that. They could have had a kickstand right here and it would have created pedal lock. And maybe it was like a, could have been like a double leg middle kickstand. And those just, they add weight and they hang down. And so this is great. Is it perfect? Is it like the super high-end kickstand? No, but it's pretty great. Uh, and then back to the brakes. We talked about the motor inhibitors, but the brakes themselves, these are Tektro. They're 160 millimeter rotors. They get the job done. This is like, you know, it's okay. Hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors would have been awesome. But do you really need 180 millimeter rotors when your wheel size is so small? Probably not. Do you need hydraulic disc brakes? Well, it certainly require a little less hand effort, but these are four finger levers. They're Wuxing Five Star is the brand. This is another kind of affordable part and they could have had one with the built-in bell or the rubberized grip or something, but that all adds cost. So the things that really matter, like the display is really nice, that the button pad is great, the batteries, the integrated lights. There's a lot of utility built into this bike, but there are some areas where they had to compromise. And I'm just glad that the pedals and like the kickstand and the, the speed sensor and stuff, those aren't areas where they compromise. And check this out, plastic guide on the chain. So if you're going over rough terrain, these are kind of off-road ready tires. Maybe you're just going off a curb or you're folding the bike, the chain isn't gonna fall off as easily because of that plastic guide. For me, that's such a big deal. 
sucks to have to touch the chain and get your hands all dirty when you just want to go out and take a ride. And I was also told, in terms of durability, that these tires have like kind of a puncture resistant layer to them. I mean, it doesn't say on the sidewall or anything, but they were like, yeah, we, we paid a little extra so that our tires would be more durable because it's kind of a bummer when you have to change a flat tire. And I think they do sell some, you know, inner tubes. You could get an extra one of those and put it in your car. Maybe you get like a trunk bag. They do sell panniers that hang on the side of this. Apparently they're all sold out on those. They do sell replacement batteries, replacement or additional batteries for around 300 bucks, which could be pretty useful if you want to like really go the distance. I'm estimating like 25 miles per charge, even with the highest level of assist or pure throttle. 25 miles, that's, that's pretty good. Just the way this bike is set up, up to like 50 if you're on the lower levels of assist and you're pedaling more actively. And with that long seat and with the, you know, nicely standard length, um, like what, crank arms? You, it feels more like a regular bike and you actually can ride longer. Like areas that you could upgrade, again, I talked about these handlebars a little bit wider, maybe swept back or something depending on your body position. There's a bit of a reach right here but it's, it's really not too bad. It's a really, it's a very capable bike. I, you know, it's more impressive than I was thinking coming into this. I was expecting to see lower end parts and it's just done a, a great job. One other area that I like to gripe about is this big like thumb shifter from Shimano. I think a lot of companies use this because when you have a twist throttle like this, see how it protrudes down here, there's a wire. If they had trigger shifters, those would collide with the side of this twist throttle and, and so it just wouldn't work there's not enough room so a lot of these companies will use the big thumb shifter and frankly if you're riding in the cold or if you're someone who's maybe just not as refined like hand motions and stuff having a big very clear shifter like this where it even has the window this gets the job done it's, it's totally acceptable and check out these wires up here they've all got quick disconnects some decent wrapping it's uh it's not internally routed which you know, looks beautiful and would be like amazing, but at the same time, that can get pinched when you fold and unfold the bike. So again, this is, they're getting it done. I would complain about no like slap guard or something on the chain stay, but they don't have a chain stay. This is like a single tube design here. And it's actually fairly, fairly sturdy. I mentioned the, the max weight of 330 pounds before. I'm not getting frame flex or anything on this. And you can see 12 gauge black spokes, 36 hole rims, you know, that it's solid it's a solid bike smaller wheels are also more sturdy spokes are one of the areas that start to like loosen up or even break over time for a lot of like heavier riders so to activate the bike first you plug the keys in and then you have to kind of push up and then twist so that they're in line with the frame otherwise they'll be kind of crooked and that means we're armed we're ready to go come up here and hold the m button for a second that display lights up really nicely. It's very visible to me. Hopefully you can see it on camera. Energy bar, 10 ticks. That's really nice. So it's a little bit more precise, like finer increments. It's not just five, they're 10. It's gonna help you make sure you have enough juice to get back home. Speed, miles per hour or kilometers per hour, you can adjust that in the settings. Pedal assist level, it starts in zero and that's sort of like a safety thing that they purposely like will start you in zero. You can activate the lights if you want to by holding the up arrow and then see it says manual lights. Here's what that headlight looks like. You could just ride this around like a bike, like a traditional analog bike. I like how that one even protrudes a little bit so you are getting some side visibility. You can ride this around just like a bike. It's just a heavy bike with kind of inefficient tires. So, you know, pretty quickly I'd be, I'd be going up to one of those one, two, three, four, five levels of assist. Down here we've got an odometer. If we press the M button, it cycles through and it says, okay, you know, trip A, voltage on your battery, uh, current on your motor, time, trip time, and then odometer. So it just kind of cycles back. There is no trip D, which at first that threw me off. It does have walk mode. So if I hold the, the down arrow for a second, see that rear wheel gets you going a few miles per hour which could be very useful if you do get a flat tire. Look at that, it's interesting. Walk mode isn't turning off automatically. Um, I'm just gonna have to pull those brakes for a second and that's gonna cut power to the motor. So there we go, it's worth, worth noting. By the way, fun little flick bell up here. A little bit of a reach to get there, but you know, again, you, you can only do so much cockpit like this. The display isn't removable, it does swivel a little bit. So if you're at a bike rack, 
sometimes I put my helmet over the display to protect it or you know I just I try not to get too close to things that could scratch it but it, it feels pretty solid it's got a nice like aluminum alloy bezel I like most of the things about the display it's so readable and it's got all these great features it does not have a USB port for like charging your phone or anything else and frankly there's not a lot of space for mounting a phone up here that's one area I've actually talked to the team and been like it'd be nice if you could tap into that battery but again, you know, apparently some of these companies, uh, the actual manufacturers, they don't like to do the USBs because they can kind of like leak power slowly. Um, and it's just more complexity, more wiring. They have to step down from 48 volts to five volts for the USB charge. So I, I get it, I've heard the story, but some companies make, make it happen. And that's an area where they could improve on this. It's one of the different, you know, we come back to the suspension display and stuff. There are some trade-offs here for the price. Uh, if you want to get into those settings, like I promised, you hold the up and down arrows. And then you've got like 20 menus. So we're on one right now. If I hit the M button, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is where you change the top speed. 32 means 32 kilometers per hour. And you just hit the, the up and down buttons to sort of raise it to a different level and then hit M. I'm going to leave it. And again, it goes all the way to 20. They have a manual that tells you what each one does. I'm not going to go through that right now. I'm going to hold the up and down, get out of there. I think we're good, guys. Like that is pretty much everything I learned about the bike, spending time with the team. And I love that it comes in two colors. They're both glossy, so white, high visibility, potentially more feminine if you want to get like a his and hers black. They both have this like metallic gray and they call it electric blue. This is a sweet looking bike. And the first time I saw it, I was like, well, yeah, I mean, it looks great because so many of the accessories and stuff, they're black by default. Like the five star levers we talked about, the grips, the, the cable housing, fenders. But the fact that they went to the extra trouble to like paint these fenders white, it's really nice. This, this bike actually looks beautiful. And I, I might get this one if it were me. If you get like your significant other and especially like ladies, maybe a little bit shorter, this this joint is a little bit wide and this is not the only bike where that is the case but it's right there where you pedal you don't want to bump your knee on that or get a bruised leg I, you get an earful from your friend if if that happens it's happened to me before in mexico uh, especially in the sand where things are a little squirrely so there's my like little pro tips for you i've got all the like stats and measurements and some other videos with these guys had a lot of fun visiting i'm back at electricbikereview.com and on the youtube channel Try my best to answer your questions and, and just provide all the stats so you can compare the bikes sort of apples to apples. But I mean, honestly, I feel like this is a pretty great product for the price. I'm really excited for the team. It's been less than a year and they've sold a ton of these and people are generally very happy and in part because of that customer support. So I think this is a great chance to hop on the bike and get out there and enjoy the evening. Okay, Robbie's locked and loaded on that helmet. I got my bike all set up. The white wonder, I call it. <laughs> there we go. And then got the, oh, I'm on pedal assist zero. So I'm gonna take it up to maybe, I'm gonna do one because I mostly like to use the throttle. Just ease into it. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. Just follow him. I can zip right up if I want to. <laughs> and of course these things kind of go anywhere. Take it off road, pretty quiet. Not here in the fenders. It's a little bit more of a zing on the the geared motor planetary geared motor it's free wheels efficiently and stuff but i think the square converter like it's not the pure sine wave converter a little bit zippy not too bad nice and it sounds like maybe a, his disc brake got bent out of place we kind of took the loner bikes here they have a, a pile of ones that they sort of pick and pull from when customers uh, have concerns or if they get a return or something like that they're whole, they're whole, doing pretty well but that's something to be aware of when you fold your own bike is just being careful of those disc brakes because they can kind of rub see i'm gonna shift the gears here do the no hands for a minute before we get like some oncoming traffic there we go and i'm already past at, at about 14 miles per hour i'm past level one so i take it all the way up to level five Popping out our speed there. Um, but I wanted to show you that delay and assist.
Okay, guys, you are connected to that 31.8 millimeter seat post. I love how long it is. You know, that's important on a more of a compact bike so it can fit a wide range of of riders. This is a one size fits all bike. I got the dimensions back at this site. From here, you're looking at that 52 tooth chain ring, a little bit larger to offset the smaller wheels, 14 to 28 tooth uh, freewheel cassette in the back. And yeah, I'm just going to pedal along, let you listen for that pedal assist, how quickly it activates. Since we're in grass, I'm going to start off with the throttle and just you just kind of listen to the whole thing. Haven't heard a lot of chain bouncing because it doesn't have chain stays, but listen for that as well on the fenders and stuff since we're off road. Here we go. Sweet, kind of did a little brake test there and it stopped quickly, even with the grass, it's a little bit damp, just slid a little bit. We've got that good traction with the fat tires. Definitely a bit of a slow start on kind of the cadence sensing on this bike. I did shift down in the gears so that my, my pedal cadence would speed up because sometimes that helps to trigger the little sensor faster, but it's still just something, it seems like it took a little bit longer um, sometimes and then it did stop pretty quickly once i stopped pedaling so that was nice okay guys so i felt like the pedal assist was starting a little bit slow with the default settings and i talked to robbie and i was like you know it's can can you adjust that and he said yeah actually you go to 11p which is back in the settings if you hold the up and down and then you go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and the default is three and we tuned it down to one and so it's going to start a little bit faster and i want to show what that looks like if you're kind of a sportier more active rider and you want that it's nice to know that you can get it There we go. That's that's much more like, it's a little bit more responsive and that's kind of what I'm used to. Sweet. Having no problem with these little hills. Just having a blast on this trail. This is, this is really the life here. Definitely a wonderful place to be. Oh, and there we go. Look, now that we're like in the shade, see how visible that display is when the backlighting is switched on because I've got those headlights enabled. No problem. And he's purposely not pedaling to sort of demonstrate the power of that motor. Beautiful. That's the fun of these things. And we got the headlight action going on back there. It is a little bit more of a B scene headlight, but I think in, in really dark conditions, it is gonna help you. You are still gonna be able to kind of see where you're going and stuff. If you have it aimed right, it's kind of aimed down a little bit. There he goes. And then there's the tail light. We've got the single LED. Yeah, I know it'd be nice to have multiple LEDs or to have like brake light enabled or blinking. That's something that I've seen on some more expensive bikes kind of in this category. But it's also, uh, you know, it's for the price. There we go. There's that rear light. Nice. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This is such a cool area. Okay, dude, I gotta try some off-road over here too. I'm gonna try to climb this hill. Just gonna take it nice and slow. And I'm going like five miles per hour and then juicing it. You know, we climbed it, kind of maintaining that five or six miles per hour. You can see it slows down a little bit and then he's pedaling and he's in a high gear. He should, could have switched down a little bit lower to really climb. But I just wanted to show that it's possible. I only weigh like 135 pounds, so your mileage may vary. But uh, we're just getting this nice floaty feel, having lots of fun cruising around this, this like floodplain or whatever it is right here. Nice. <laughs> well, Robbie, thank you so much for coming out. It's a lot of fun. This is a really sweet trail. Yeah, it's 
Yeah. Really cool. A lot of fun. You guys, that's it. I think we're going to head back now and grab some food. For the full written review, I'll see you at electricbikereview.com. Thank you for kind of bringing this bike up and, and requesting it because it was a little bit off my radar. I'd heard about it, but everyone was like, yeah, I really want to see what you think of this. I've been very thorough, um, fairly complimentary, I think, but also honest about just some of the trade-offs that you can determine whether it's worth paying X hundred dollars more for suspension and some of these other pieces. Love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Just having a blast, huh? <laughs> so guys, this is Sam. How's it going, buddy? Hey. I noticed you're working on a, a bike here, and uh, what's your role here? What are you doing today? Uh, you know, I'm the uh, electric bike specialist, so, you know, I essentially build uh, bikes that, you know, may need to be repaired. A little uh, TLC? Yeah, you know, something, you know, tighten the pedals sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's doing a motor swap. Uh, sometimes, you know, kind of figuring out and configuring the derailleur, uh, just making adjustments. Was this returned or how did it? Um, uh, yeah, just, you know, just sh a little bit of shipping damage. It happens. Um, so sometimes they come back and I, you know, they're not working. So it's Sweet. my job to make it work. Well, and you're like notorious around here because you do some bike share thing I, yep, here I in Phoenix. The, I do the bike share thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I run uh, I run grid bike share. Oh, uh, and then. When I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm in here. So just more bikes, the better. We just like passed it up. You like in charge of the whole thing in Phoenix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, how does that work for people? Uh, <laughs> it's it's great. You know, you essentially have an account. You set it up, get an account number and a pin, and you input it into the computer, and then you you ride. Sweet. So 117 different stations across the valley. So yeah, it's good. But um, but again, you know, I like e-bikes because it's helping people who may not feel comfortable on a regular bike sure stay on a bike well and that's the thing not everyone has mm -hmm. space for a bike so a folding bike really helps but other times it's like ah, i just we need to get from here to there to the public transportation sure. and i don't want to lock sure. the bike so you got the bike share i think that's a really cool program thank you thank you yeah, yeah rock yeah. on yeah, sam good luck with this one sorry to interrupt you it's all good <laughs> later